Hey everybody, welcome back to the Balanced Vibes podcast. My name is Kirsten. Today we're going to talk about fitness and I'm going to share with you my personal story with fitness, uh, how it has, how my relationship with it has evolved over the many years that have been engaging in all things fitness. And the reason is that I think there were a lot of times where the reason why I did certain things was unhealthy the reasons were unhealthy the ways I did these things was, were unhealthy and where I am now and where things are much better and I'm hoping that maybe this episode helps you to see where you are on your journey maybe connect some dots maybe find some similarities and maybe find a way to if your relationship with exercise has been unhealthy find a way to come out of it and start seeing it from a healthier perspective I will say that for me it has been a really long journey to get to where I am right now where fitness is so much more than just like shaping your body Um, just the other day actually I told you my husband that honestly I just look forward to going to the gym and sometimes I just want to stay there longer because I just feel so good there I like the way like lifting something makes me feel it gives me like a peace of mind and um, it has definitely changed from where I was when I was younger when a lot of it was just revolving around calorie burning and changing the way my body looked it was very focused on that so today I want to give you kind of a, a journey where I'm coming from and in the meantime like when I'm talking about different types of exercise there's lots of cardio here there's some hit there's some strength training how these modalities or ways of working out have impacted me what I've been feeling how they have changed my relationship with exercise and food and all that so I hope that you find this episode helpful so I actually want to go back quite a bit to my very uh, young years so when I actually got um, interested in anything fitness and that was around I think nine years old when I started track and field so obviously when you're that little uh, most people hopefully don't uh, think about like calories and burning and although I think some people do and that's really unfortunate for for me it was never the case it was just pure joy pure fun I loved track and field and I worked really hard so I definitely wasn't a very talented kid in the group at all it's probably one of the least talented I have to say but I worked my ass off because I loved what I was doing. I loved running, jumping, throwing, and I would do a lot of extra stuff. So when I was like, let's say 15, 16, it really was a big passion of mine that I also started playing basketball. So I've always been very active and I did extra stuff. Like I said, you know, when the coach said, you you know, do this, I would do this and then more this is how I always was and um, I think maybe there's a little bit of perfectionist but honestly it was also because I really really truly enjoyed it and I just I just wanted to do as much as I could Uh, track and field was my number one love and still is I still love to watch uh, you know most major major competitions I always watch it so this is where everything kind of started and there's nothing disordered about this it was like healthy young teenager who just was active and uh loved what she was doing and I was in uh I was doing track and fields until I was I think 21 so uh first couple of years in college I was still doing it I was uh towards the end of my quote-unquote carry career uh I threw javelin so this was my main thing but then you know I I stopped as many people do when they're that age I like I said I wasn't that talented I didn't have like a big bright future ahead of me you know in this athletic field at all so I I just dropped that and um I became a lot less active and so I started gaining weight and I was 20 years old 1920 something like that when I started working at at a restaurant and I also bought my first car so I moved less I had dropped track and field by the time I was 21 and I was working at a restaurant I was eating a lot more I was sampling everything that I could and I gained a good amount of weight and I was really 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 uncomfortable because this was like a really different body I had never in my life had a problem with weight before so I had always been like athletic and I never even thought like how much can I eat whatever my mom would always joke like geez you can like eat so much chocolate and not blink an eye it was true like I I was just I was so active I just burnt it off and uh, now you know I had gained weight I was 21 I remember January new year and I was like I'm gonna do something about this and what I did was that I joined Weight Watchers and of course I've shared about that before too 
it's a pretty restrictive or at least I made it very restrictive. I always try to eat less. And, um, and I also started lots of running and I started running because I wanted to get the weight down fast. And I noticed that when I do more running, then, um, then I lose weight faster and I could have done strength training too, but in my world, it was not a good idea because when I checked my watch, then that told me that when I did one hour of running, that burned more calories than one hour at the gym. And this is what I did from, you know, 21 years old till up until like 27, 28, I ran obsessively. And, you know, honestly, at first when the weight came down and I started to feel lighter, I got faster. Of course I got faster. Actually, there's a big difference. Like weight makes a big difference in endurance sports. And I started running marathons. I started running half marathons, 10 Ks, uh, whatever you could imagine. And uh, at first I did pretty good. So I had lost the weight, I had the speed and I was training right. I was training right. I was even uh, looking up some programs. Like I wanted to prepare for my first half marathon. I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this right. So I found the program, followed it. Um, you know, I did, I did it the way you should. So I still know how, actually how to coach running because I did it for so many years. Um, so I would do like long running days, I had sprint days, I had interval days, I had like a medium um, distance days and it was very structured. It was good. But the problem was that I was under eating. I was severely under eating. And uh, even though at first I didn't feel it terribly after let's say a couple of years I definitely started feeling it and I will tell you you know the reason why I probably didn't feel like crap at first was that I was fairly young you know 21 22 23 somewhere there the body's a little bit more resilient and uh, I just I just found this so much like this internal strength to go and run and cover these long distances and to be honest it was a fantastic feeling when I was still doing well when the uh, results of like under eating had not kicked in so bad yet and this was a good time and I definitely don't want to say that running is bad or you know nobody should do it because I know what for example runner's high feels like and this is a really really amazing feeling but I will say you cannot experience a runner's high if you're not in great shape in a great running shape you have to be in a really good running shape and if you then are able to go like long distances and experience true runner's high which it really feels like high it's amazing. It's really, really amazing feeling. It's kind of like you can lose track of time and everything and just run and run and run. And it's really amazing. So I definitely got to these places and uh, I was good. So I remember the first half marathon I did, it was great. The first half full marathon I did went really well. And I was like, oh my goodness, I have this engine in me. I literally remember one time coming home from a run, I told my mom, like, I feel like this engine in me is like, I can like push it for forever. Like I have so much energy in me. But uh, let me tell you again, this was like in fairly in the beginning. Now, as time went uh, on and I continued this running and I continued to decrease the food that I ate and increase the amount that I ran, I started to feel it. So, of course, my periods went away. They went away for 10 years. And uh, I also started feeling more tired. I get a lot of uh, sleep issues. Um, I wasn't definitely wasn't feeding my body like barely, you know, I ate super low fat and I just wanted to keep my weight down. And now I had gone, gone from the place of like, oh, let's have fun. Let's run some races to the place of like, I'm going to sign up for the race and then use that as a reason to really push myself with long runs and under eating. And the way I would do it was some days I would even run three hours without any food in my stomach. This is how extreme it got. And I felt like I have to add more and more and more running to keep the same body weight that I wanted, right? Which was like 60 kilograms max. I think it's 135 or so pounds. And um, right now, if I was that weight, I, I don't know, I would be so skinny. It would kind of scare me. It would be way too low weight for me. But back then, this was the number in my head. This is the reason why I did it. And it went on, you know, many years, I think seven years or so. I just did it obsessively, obsessively all the time. And I also noticed that the races that I do, like did every year, like there's, let's say like there's every spring, there's this one 23 kilometer run. I'm speaking kilometers because I lived in Europe when I did this. So it was 23 kilometers every spring we did it. And I started noticing that year after year, I started getting worse and worse and worse. Whereas I should have gotten better, better, better had I done it properly. But the problem was that I was just pushing the 
they're called actually in the runner's work, there's this term like junk miles. I was pushing these junk miles, like add more and more and more distance, but not eating accordingly. And my no wonder that my times actually really slowed down and I didn't get anywhere anymore. But it wasn't anymore my focus to run good race times. My focus was to keep my weight down. And this is a really messed up mindset. And you really don't want to have that when you uh, engage in any type of fitness thing. If you get to the point where you get so obsessive that the only purpose of you engaging in fitness is just to keep your weight down, then you are in a bad place. And that often can then come as, you know, include an eating disorder, which I also had, um, and never looking what's actually going on deeper inside. So I don't know exactly like why I developed this. I have a couple of theories. I think one of the things was truly that I had always been an athlete and then seeing all this weight gain was really uncomfortable. So I wanted to get it down and I wanted to get to the place where I felt comfortable. But I know that there's definitely some shame involved in there. Uh, you know, some things that people do, you know, to you, you know, cause shame. And I think they definitely had uh, some impact. And I'm only learning later now in life that shame is something that's never like internally with us when we're born. It's somebody has put it into us. It's kind of cool to realize it because then you realize it's not yours. So I found some relief from it, but it wasn't until I was like, you know, now 38 years old, but I didn't know that when I was 21 and I was still like pushing and pushing. I definitely tried to validate myself through my body and how skinny was I was, how much I could work out, how disciplined I was able to be around foods. So this was a mess. And um, like I said, there were definitely good times too when I experienced the, experienced the runner's high or if I ran my marathons, I did four marathons in a lot in my life. And of course, there are fun times. There are some running groups that I joined. Um, you know, there it's not only negative, but just like to, speaking from like a mental, emotional aspect, it was pretty messed up. And I don't wish that to anybody. So what happened then after that? So when I was 28 and I had been doing the intense running and had developed an eating disorder, definitely, um, by that time, between the years of 21 and 27, when I was 28, I actually moved to Berkeley, California. Uh, before that, I had lived in Finland. So I'm from Estonia. I lived in Finland for a year, for four years. Then I moved to the States. And uh, I also should say that when I was in Finland, I also had some difficulties with the relationship that I was in. And this running was like a, like a tool for me to get away from this. So it definitely helped. I thought it helped me with it but I never looked into the problems that we're having. It's obviously these problems just got like, let's let's hide them, let's not talk about them. And that was me personally, um, you know, not expressing what I wanted. And it was just easier to go and try to uh, go hiding by running so much, right? Not Let's not talk about problems. Then not, let's not potentially let things to develop into a conflict. This was like, I was always avoiding that. So running was the easier solution, right? That's why I did it. Anyways, then when I turned 28 and I moved to Berkeley, so many things changed. So at first I still would still run a little bit here and there. I mean, at first I was consistent, still running, it was still habit. But then I became less obsessed with it because you know what? I started making friends. I started having really good times. There were a lot of people here who were from you know other countries who are in the same situation as I was. They're from foreign countries, visiting scholars and students. We started going out more, we started having so much fun, staying up later, eating out more, eating out like late night pizzas, drinking crap ton of wine, and just having, you know, the year of my life, basically, you know, all the things that it includes. It was a lot of fun. And uh, during that time, I did exercise, I did, but uh, I wasn't as obsessed. I, I wasn't counting any calorie anymore, or I didn't, I was not like obsessed with it at all. And I just let things go. So I'd still go for a run sometimes. And I also joined the rec center at UC Berkeley to take some fitness classes, but it definitely wasn't strength training and it definitely wasn't anything as hardcore as what I had done before. And as a result, you know, just like good things, definitely good things happened too. Like I became way more social because I had always had this story in my mind that nobody likes me. I'm not a social person. I don't think I will ever make any new friends. 
uh, I'm just so awkward socially. My English is shit. Like, I, you know, I don't know how it's going to go. But then I learned that it doesn't have to be this way. It had always been a story, story, story in my head, right? And so now I've been going out, having making more friends, and the fitness just wasn't number one anymore for me. So great times, but also during that time, I gained a lot of weight as a result of just like all the things that I just mentioned. And uh, when it was time after one year to go back to Estonia, I had obviously put on weight and I wanted to wanted to get that down because I felt, again, shame, right? Why did I gain weight? Uh, it felt uncomfortable. I didn't feel like myself and also I had a wedding coming up. So of course, I wanted to get in better shape again. And when I got back to Estonia, I was like, OK, let's do this hardcore again. And I uh, started working as a language teacher and one of my students, uh, I actually taught medical uh, professionals. I doc taught doctors. And I remember one of my students told me about this thing, paleo diet. And uh, I started following that. And uh, also back then, it was like 2013 then, I think, uh, paleo and CrossFit were the two words that came together, went together everywhere, right? Paleo, CrossFit, CrossFit, paleo, same thing. <laughs> so everybody who was doing CrossFit was also eating paleo and, and other way around. And I started doing CrossFit too. We only had one CrossFit box in Estonia back then. And I joined that and I had a great experience. I really liked it. And I think uh, these days I don't agree with everything they do in CrossFit. And I absolutely don't think that this is uh, good for everybody. But where I was back then, you know, young, um, healthy, fit, I could do it, right? And uh, I'm lucky that we we had good coaches too. I know that a lot of coaches are just whatever, but our coaches were good. I like them. They taught us stuff. And I started to realize that strength training is actually kind of cool, right? Although CrossFit is not just strength training. It's like a mix of like strength training, cardio, conditioning, stuff like that. But definitely I learned strength training. So I learned to deadlift. I learned to pull up. I learned to squat with a barbell on my back. And I absolutely fell in love with kettlebell work. So these are the things we did a lot in CrossFit. But uh, because I was, again, in, on a mission to like go hardcore and lose the weight and get in really good shape, I still overdid it. So the relaxed mindset that I had had, it was just like back to like, okay, now we're going to crush it again. And uh, I did CrossFit three days a week. And I also picked up running again and did that maybe three days a week too. So that's quite a bit and I think it's more than most people need but there's also a lot of like uh, other things going on so I was just finishing my PhD which you can imagine is quite a bit of work uh, writing the the last chapters revisiting everything you read your whole thesis for like 30 times you still find mistakes and your supervisor still finds mistakes and there's like a mess you have to do everything so many times so I had that going on and then at the same time I had decided that once I finish my PhD, I'm actually done with this thing called linguistics and I'm going to become a personal trainer. So at the same time, I decided that I'm going to get a, a personal trainer certification. I was also working, like I said, I was teaching medical professionals, I was teaching the, uh, the Finnish language. And uh, what else? I did something else too. Oh, I think uh, at one point I actually also translated a paleo book into Estonian from English. So. I had a lot of things going on and you can probably imagine that that was quite a bit of stress and also um, it was, yeah, it, it was definitely intense and it was the time in my life when I was only able to sleep with sleeping pills. So I was very stressed, but I was still young and I was able to lose the weight and uh, I did. I definitely got into a really small shape again and I was getting my wedding dress done every time I went to you know, get it, like, try it on the, the lady who was making it. She was like, oh, we have to make it smaller again. We have to make it smaller again. You're losing weight again. So this is how it went. But I definitely got in the shape that I wanted to be in and was, like, proud and happy about it. And my periods were still gone. <laughs> still didn't have them. So um, that's the, the period of my life where I was introduced to strength training, but I still overdid it. I did it because I combined it with so much cardio and I didn't give myself a break. And I had so many other things going on uh, in my life as well. So now after that, moved back to the States and I was poor. I didn't have money to continue with CrossFit. I looked into it and I was like, I have no idea how I'm going to 
even make this money. I was like new here. I had to get my first job in the States and uh, I only had my personal trainer certification and very little experience. So I didn't have the money to join the CrossFit gym. So what did I do is that I was going to figure out if like another way to stay in shape, but I didn't want to do only running because I had kind of gotten the taste of like, oh, it doesn't have to be just cardio. It can be some strength training too. And then I started doing lots of hits, hits training. And this time I would say was the hit training is the one that I like the least out of like strength training, cardio and hit. It's so intense if you do it the way that I did. And I did it with like, uh, you know, all in just oh, give it your all you know you cannot take breaks just go as hard as you can the way I did it was like set your timer for like 12 or 15 minutes and work really hard like 30 seconds on let's say high knees or something 10 seconds rest then you do 30 seconds of something else really high intensity and rest for 10 and I did these hit workouts and I continued to do running as well and it was so much intensity it was just so much but I was proud of myself that I was doing it. I even started blogging back then. So this is how far back my blogging and social media goes. And when I was first blogging, it was like, hit training, go as hard as you can. You know, it's pretty much, I said, I don't know if I exactly said it, but in my mind was like, yeah, you have to like, when you lie down after workout, you should be seeing stars and things, right? That's how I thought was the right thing to work out. It was just too much. It's just really draining, it's exhausting for the body to do that. And I also combined it with back then, you know, it's in fasting. <laughs> not, a, not a very good idea. And I was so depleted. I was so tired. And of course, my body shape, like I, I was definitely much leaner than I am now, but I still didn't have my period. And I started getting these weird symptoms of like lack of motivation. I got to the point where I was so burnt out. I was like, I'm tired. I don't want to do this anymore, but I kind of have to keep going. And what I did was so that I would stay accountable and still do the workouts. I would sign up for the gym where they have boot camps and, and go there as a, as a client. So I had to, I needed this like external motivation, which was totally new to me. And, and it was kind of like a cue to me that something is off. Because I had been very self-motivated, like since I was nine years old, like my mom never had to tell me to remind me to go to track training. I was like the first one showing up. Um, and then throughout all these years of like running and doing CrossFit, I never had a problem with motivating myself. I'm like, oh, come on, get, stand, get up and go. Never. But now, like after doing so much cardio and hit training, I had hit this point where I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this anymore. I'm like really tired. And what's up with that lack of motivation? And then, oh, then I also finally realized that I probably should also look into that missing periods thing. And uh, I went to see my acupuncturist, really cool guy. And I'm so sad that he had to leave during the crazy years, 2020 and so on. Um, he had to close his business, but he was great. And he said that, you know what, we have to do something about this because it's not normal for a woman of your age uh, what was I, I don't know 31 or 32 do not have a period and he said you may have to take it easier at the gym give yourself more breaks give yourself more food and relax and so I would say that it was really the hit and the ton of cardio that put me over the top like up to up until this point I had been able to handle it kind of even though you know it wasn't great but now I was like really exhausted and so hearing it from him was like a relief it was a relief and also remember being there on his table, you know, lying down with all the needles in you. And, uh, you know, you can't distract yourself. You cannot grab your phone. You can't do anything. You're just lying there and realize that, holy shit, like, what have I done? That's so crazy. Like, I've been so obsessed with this exercise and, like, keeping my body in a certain shape and size. And I think I, I think this feels like uh, I really have to turn things around from here. And hearing from him that I have to take this break, it was hard, but it was also permission. It was also permission because I had, I think, somewhere deep inside me where I didn't want to look at, I had known that what I've, what I've been doing is just too much. And now getting this permission to rest more was like, all right, I can do this now. I don't know if I could have done this on my own. That's why it's sometimes good to have a coach or a guide or somebody who tells you what to do. 
but with his permission, I was able to do it. So what happened next was a uh, period with my workouts where I just didn't do anything. Uh, all I did was just walking. I did yoga uh, twice a week. And that's all I did. And both were really great for me. So I no longer tracked my steps, like how many am I getting? Uh, I didn't track anything. And yoga was really good for my mind too, to calming your mind, my mind. And uh, this lasted for about five months until my periods then came back and I started to feel a lot better. And of course, during that time, I did gain weight because I had to. I had to eat more to restore my hormonal health and all that. And uh, when I got my periods back and I had my energy up again, um, I was thinking, how can I, how do I exercise now? I didn't really know because let me remind you, like I had only done lots of cardio. I'd done kind of a little bit strength training where that I had learned from CrossFit. I'd done some hit training, but nothing was like real strength training, right? And I was thinking, what do I do? And I just, I don't want to mess up my hormones again. I don't want to go in, on any like super restricted diets or anything. How do I now navigate my health? And, uh, I just started doing random things. I tried cardio a little bit. That felt really bad. Also because I had so much more weight on me. Um, weight matters a lot in when you do like endurance workouts, endurance training. Because let me tell you, I've done four marathons, four full marathons in my life. And the fourth one that I did, I weighed a lot more than I weighed in the first three. So uh, it was a lot harder. So now having all this extra weight on me didn't feel good. Then I tried some hit training and also like it was so uncomfortable so I kind of was looking and I didn't know what to do and I did a little bit of this and a little bit of that lifted little kettlebells here little dumbbells there didn't really know what I was doing and then it was around 2019 end of 2019 that I uh, started kind of learning more about actual strength training this was also the time when I find, found Mind Pump which is a really great fitness pod podcast that I've been listening I think since then like mid 2019 and um, started listening to them, kind of learning more about strength training. And 2020 March, when I started with macros because I wanted to lose some body fat, uh, my friend also gave me like a, a strength training plan. And this is when I really learned to uh, kind of use dumbbells like properly. I mean, I had known before how to use them kind of sort of, but I didn't know how, what the programming is like, what, what should it be like, all that. And then like March 2020, I really started doing like more heavy lifting and, uh, you know, actual dumbbell work, not with 10 pounds or 15 pounds, but like 50 pounds and things like that. And uh, and then gradually decreasing my macros and all that learning. And it was like a really calm time. Like I didn't do any of this from the place of urgency, from the place of like, I got to lose 20 pounds by last month. Um, I didn't do any of that because... I had this experience with like burning myself out so bad that I was like, I'm not going to go back to that anymore. I don't want to. I just want to see if this approach would work if I take it easier, if I'm kind of like kinder to myself and kind of go into it without, without like huge expectations. And it works surprisingly well. And, uh, you know, this 2020, I worked out with dumbbells. I got myself like adjustable dumbbells that went up to like 52 and a half pounds each. And this is what I used to work out. And uh, I started getting really good results and the, the mindset was like so calm. It was very different from what I had done before. So with cardio, I'd always been like, can I go a little longer? Can I add a few more miles? Like, can I, uh, you know, burn more calories? And with HIIT was like, can you get to the point where you're just basically like collapsing because it's so hard? With weight training, it was like, yeah, it's hard, but now I'm going to sit down. I'm going to put my ass down and, and rest. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do my eight squats again and sit down and rest. And I was like, oh, that's kind of, does it even work? Because at first you have this mindset when you're like so used to doing like a ton of things and like really put yourself all the time. You get this idea, does it even work? But like I said, because I didn't have this like urgency mindset, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to see if it works, right? I'm going to let things unfold. And uh, it got better, better. <laughs> it really did get better, better. I would still like throw some yoga here in here and there. I would go on long walks, but I did just strength training. And I was, I would say that especially things kind of sped up for me when I, when we moved to Arizona and because in California, all the gyms were closed in 2020. So early 2021, we moved to Arizona. Gyms were open here. Thank God. Way different approach to everything here. 
um, which we're really grateful for and uh, part of the reason why we moved. So dreams are open here and I now had ex access to like barbells and heavier weights and different, you know, cable machines and like, let's say just full gym. And uh, I started doing like real strength training, like getting more, um, kind of learning more about programming myself too, like how to do this, why things are done a certain way, what is the right sequence of exercise, how you're supposed to feel like, uh, why you're not supposed to rush through your sets, you know, how does it feel to push yourself but not push yourself over the limits. So it was, it, it took some time to figure these things out, but it was like magic. I was just like start seeing like, oh, my body's changing. Like I'm, I have these like pretty cool looking shoulders and oh, wow, I'm the first time in my life I'm growing some butt that I've never had before. And all this came with this mindset of like, oh, all right, we're like calm here, relaxed here. There's like no anxiety, no like this huge achieving, like pushing, pressing, punishing. This was all gone. And this was new to me and it was wonderful and I loved it. And, um, you know, now this is what I've been doing. And I will still say that I understand the benefits of cardio and I absolutely 100% understand the feeling that you may get when you do like a long distance running, when you have this like feeling like I could do anything. Sometimes you feel it with cardio. It's still like, it still has like a, this face in my heart but I regret like how I, how I basically abused it and like, pushed myself too far with it and the mindset that I had. So this is like just, it's, it's such a different mindset now with the strength training when it's like, okay, I'm doing it for like strength and I'm noticing that I'm more balanced. There's no anxiety associated with it. I don't have to do it for like five hours. I don't tell myself how much I can eat based on how I worked out. So these things are now gone. And I'm I'm sure that there is, I know that there's a healthy way to do cardio too. I know I have friends who do it, right? Uh, who do cardio in a healthy way. But, uh, you know, you have to make sure that you're not doing it for the wrong reasons, the reasons that I did it for. So when I would say like, when I look at these three categories and uh, how things have like evolved for me, I would say that physically, uh, of course, I've gotten the best results, like physical strength results from strength training. Like there's no doubt. But also like having the endurance was a fun feeling. It was a great feeling. And I definitely don't have that same level of endurance. I don't know if I ever, ever pick up running that way anymore. I doubt it. But, you know, you never know. Um, but I definitely want to talk about the physical aspect of it. I did not enjoy hit training too much at all. It's just, it was just physically so tiring. Like your body was tired, like beat up the whole time and really exhausted. So that definitely wasn't, uh, wasn't the best thing for me. Now, when we look at the health perspective, definitely I'm the healthiest right now. And the majority of my workouts are lifting and walking because, you know, muscle is so protective on the body. It gives you so many health benefits uh, gives you the stability and strength and mobility. And it also has this really cool effect on your blood sugar, right? Because I had, uh, for for some time, I had some problems with like blood sugar swings, ups and downs, slight insulin you know, insulin uh, uh, resistance. And these problems are gone now as a result of strength training. And when I did like lots of cardio, I definitely didn't have this. Like I, I know that my bones must have been weaker because... I didn't do anything to strengthen my muscle. Therefore, I didn't do anything to strengthen my bones. And also because I wasn't producing hormones, I didn't have my periods. Definitely during the time of like intense cardio, long cardio, uh, my my bones didn't get the the strength that they should have. I didn't strengthen them. So I'm, sh I'm sure I haven't measured it, but logically thinking it makes so much more sense that my bone strength is probably much better right now with strength training. And now when we talk about lastly, the mental effect of, like all the things um what hit training teaches you like if you go all out the way i did like yes mental like resilience like yes power through do this like very much like this athlete mindset but if you know your personality and if you are like i was you know that it's eventually it's going to burn you out if you do all your workouts like this if you all your workouts are all out push yourself so hard 
that's it's just like it's not good but it can be good for like building mental resilience i'm gonna argue with that it's just not what yeah. how i want to do it now but i would say that like being strong having this physical strength definitely has uh, benefits and carry over to mental health too so many women tell me that when they start training they're like i feel more confident i feel better um i think i've talked about it before but a long time ago when i was in california and i was teaching some classes there I also taught a power thing power lifting class for women and uh, I remember there's one lady who said you know she said that uh, I never thought that fitness could be for me because I'm so overweight but now like I'm excited I brag about it like I do this I was able to lift this weight and I go tell everybody at work and she was like so pumped it was so great for her she loved it and she was like excited and all that so it's definitely can have like really great mental health benefits and to be honest uh when you the longer you do the fitness thing the more you realize that it's far from being just like oh let's get you smaller let's get you fitter, let's get you leaner although we talk about this all the time and we suck too like i'm guilty of that like a lot of these podcast episodes are how you can you get these results but the longer you do it the more you realize that it's also for your mental health. It, it so much is. And uh, it's it's kind of like, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a magical, honestly. And if you're maybe new to fitness and maybe you just gotten started, and I understand that most people get into it because they wanted to change their body composition and lose fat, lose weight. But those who stick with it, like over time, start seeing like how helpful and, and good and necessary almost it is for mental health too and that's what often keeps them going so this is definitely um definitely one of the things and speaking of mental health aspect i think running can be really great too like i said the run, runner's high is a fantastic feeling if you can get to the point if you have the level of endurance and strength and you're able to experience it i think it can be pretty pretty cool and pretty awesome too i remember these moments when i was at the peak of my best running shape and uh I felt really good mentally too but I definitely fried myself with just like overdoing and and just doing just crazy things crazy distances and everything was just determined by like what my scale said so this was not a healthy place to be but not everybody goes that far right a lot of people really do running for like mental health benefits they love it it makes them feel great and I think this is really cool I'm nothing against that we just have to look this is with every type of exercise we have to look at the the reasons why we're doing it how much we're doing this how we're recovering from this and like I said earlier with my running like with the seven eight years that I ran so obsessively like is there something else that I'm not uh, addressing because in my case there absolutely was uh, some stuff that I didn't want to look at didn't have the confidence didn't have the tools and skills to look at these things like I didn't even know myself had zero confidence so that was the reason why I went totally overboard with it anyways uh I think the main message here is that um have a healthy relationship with your exercise like don't let your body goals or like the calories or your body fat percentage like always determine like what you should do and how much you should do and don't get into this like punishment mindset this is not what fitness is for this is not really how to do it if you want to have a healthy relationship with it and if you want to have it for the rest of your life then um you have to take this like calmer approach this kind of relaxed approach yes i will push myself but not to the point of like like when i'm punishing myself um I still want to get good results, yes, but I'm also noticing what else I'm getting out of it. I'm going to notice if my life is balanced. Is exercise adding value to my life or is it taken away? How does it make me feel? I felt like, for example, when I did a lot of hit training, because the nature of training was so anxious, I also felt more anxious. And now, because the what I do a lot is like slow walking, like you just can't be anxious when you do that. Or strength training, like you do your set and you sit down and you rest. It's hard to be anxious. <laughs> I guess you could. But for me, there's like way, way less of that. So uh, I hope this episode was was helpful for you. I would really like to get your feedback on it. And uh, tell me, how are you doing? What kind of workouts are you preparing? How do they make you feel? And how do you feel like, you know, where are you in this place of like, how, what is your, ex what is your relationship with exercise? Like, has it changed? Was it like mine in the past? Is it better now? So I would like to know how you're feeling about all of that.
All right. So one more thing, if you have not subscribed to this podcast yet, please do. I would really like to see you uh, subscribing and also sharing this episode with your friends and family. And also please join my Fit and Feel Facebook group. If you are not there yet, we're definitely talking about healthy exercise there. None of the obsessive crazy stuff <laughs> that I did in the past. All right. Thank you so much for being here today and I'll see you again very soon. Take care.